In this tutorial, I'll be discussing some of the key features available in Excellent Audio's Addictive Drums, as well as show you how you can use the software to create your own sounds. Let's start by adding an Addictive Drums VST instrument. The first thing you should see when you open up this kit is the startup kit here. It's just a very basic sounding drum set. Everything you need. If for some reason you don't see this, all you have to do is click on this little wrench icon here and this brings up the uh, instrument box. If you want to change your instrument up, all you have to do is click up here where it says Start Up. You notice I have uh, some of the ad packs here. The Metal Ad Pack, the Real Machines Ad Pack has electronic drums. Highly recommended if you're into electronic music at all. We also have some retro kits here. Let's see here we got... I'm sure these are supposed to be like Blue Oyster Cult kits. We got some Led Zeppelin sounding kits. And if you look down here, these are all Ludwig drums. All real multi-sampled drum instruments. Sounds pretty good. Try a couple other kits here. Let's see here. How about we'll try a Patrick Siege kit. How about some Detroit, New York, and Chicago? Uh, these are the electronic drum sets. That's a nice heavy kick. Nice distorted electric snare. How about this one? Also, if you want to change, um, if you're in a preset, like uh, we're in the distorted preset bank, if you want to just change your presets, you can click these arrows here. And one of the nice things about this program, too, Addictive Drone. Um, tends to load the samples a lot faster than a lot of other drum samplers that I've tried in the past. Samples load pretty quick here. Try a couple other kits here. Danger Zone. As you can see, there's definitely a lot of possibilities here. Next thing we're going to look at is an easy way to sample the different drum sets. The easiest way to try out different kits and addictive drums is to click on this button up here where it says uh, Beats. So we'll go ahead and click that. And inside this window we have a whole bunch of different MIDI loops. And if uh, you're looking for a specific type of um, style of music you can type it up here. For instance if we're looking for metal. There's some, a whole bunch of metal kits right there. We'll just click on one of those. Go ahead and hit, go ahead and hit this play button here. Maybe we'll try some rock ones. What you want to do once you get a beat that you're kind of happy with is you want to go ahead and start trying different kinds of drum sets. So we'll say that. How about... That's, that's not too bad right there, so we'll go ahead and start with that one. We'll try some different drum sets out.
This is the drum set I ended up using for the track that we'll be working with, so I'm going to stick with this one for the time being, the Boom Room preset, but this is just to give you an idea of how you can uh, try out your different drum sets and find things that you actually like. Now, I do like this drum set, but the, there, are, there are some things about this drum set that I don't like, and I'm going to go ahead and change that stuff up right now. Okay, so what I'm about to show you here are a couple really nice features with addictive drums. The first thing that we have here is in your beats. We're working with this drum beat here. You can actually drag these drum beats out of addictive drums directly into your arrangement. So go ahead and do that now. It's asking me if I want to import the tempo and time signature data into the arrangement, which in this case it would change the tempo of the arrangement to 95 beats per minute, and uh, the time signature would remain the same because it's in 4-4. Four four. So I'm going to go ahead and click no on that. I'm going to select this clip here, control L for loop brace. And I'm going to start uh, changing this kit up a little bit. So I'm going to go back to the kit first. One of the first things I notice about this kit that I kind of don't like is it's very airy. It's got way too much like a reverb sound. So the first thing I'm going to do is play this clip back. I'm going to start muting a couple of these mics. I'm going to mute this room mic and this bus mic and see what kind of a difference it makes. Alright, we can already hear that's a little bit tighter sounding. Now, Addictive Drums. Addictive Drums has a really, really nice built-in um, reverb that's supposed to emulate an actual room like the, the room that was recorded in so I don't want to eliminate this entirely but I do want to cut it down quite a bit to almost nothing so let's see what it sounds like now let's try to turn this overhead up a little bit I'm going to try turning this snare up a little bit Seems kind of low in the mix. Now I don't want a live hi-hat on this track because um, it is an electronic track so I'm going to go, go ahead and switch this to an electronic hi-hat. See what this one sounds like. Okay, so we're already, uh, it's sounding a little bit better to me. Now I know I'm going to want to be able to trigger a clap sound, so I'm going to go ahead and change this extra symbol to a clap. Alright, so there we have a clap sound. Alright, so sounds pretty good so far. Next we're going to start working with some of Addictive Drums built-in effects. Hopefully by now you're starting to see some of the things that you'd be able to accomplish with Addictive Drums. For instance, you could add just about any kind of kick that you wanted. We've got all kinds of kicks here to choose from. There's Ludwig's, Pearl's, Sonar's. 
um, some electronic drums. Uh, I could change any of these toms if I wanted to. But for now, what we're going to do is we're going to actually look at some of the built-in effects. To access the effects for the individual tracks, what you want to do is click on the actual uh, instrument. For instance, this kick. I like the way this kick sounds, but I kind of want a tighter, punchier kick sound, so I'm going to EQ this a little bit. I'm not going to go into great depth uh, about how to use all these different effects on all the different instruments because um, really for an advanced user, a lot of this stuff should be self-explanatory, but to basically click this button here and this is going to insert some effects. I'm going to throw on an EQ effect for this kick drum and I basically I want a high pass filter on this so I'm gonna knock that last filter down there maybe increase the Q a little bit to his bandwidth um, this decides how much frequency bandwidth is covered now let's do a kind of a different set made that's without it so with it I think I'm gonna notch this up a little bit so I wanted to cut out some of the lower frequencies, but I didn't want to eliminate them entirely. Okay, so we're sounding a little tighter there. But there's a multitude of things you could do with this in any case. Um, if you wanted to add distortion, there's a few different types of distortion that you can add to your different instruments. Uh, you can add different kinds of envelopes to certain instruments. Uh, this is a volume envelope, so uh, what this envelope does is basically after the uh, main attack it fights it down so that you won't be able to hear the snare anymore. Maybe I'll go ahead and add a distortion to the clap and see what it sounds like. Try some different distortions here. See that's a lot louder. That's definitely a lot louder. Crush is usually the most distorted kind of distortion that you can use.